It's another, it's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, to the saints in the chat, to the saints scattered around the world that we don't know about. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let me tell you something about my belly right now. You know what I'm saying? I feel that thing stretching out my shirt. You know what I'm saying? Listen, uh, we we uh, are leaving the first day of the Day of Atonement. I'm sorry, Day of uh, Tabernacles. Going into the second day of the Day, day of Tabernacles. Um, if y'all missed the, the special study this morning, um, feel free to go to the YouTube page and find it. Um, but let's see, what did we talk about last week? Last week we read, uh, we read what John 10 and Luke 10, right? So, John 10, we talked a little bit about, uh, Yahushua said he's the door, all right? He said the door, he said, he said he's the door to the sheepfold, and he said that anybody who come up through any other way other than the door is a thief and a robber. And he was trying to explain to us that his sheep know his voice, in other words, when his voice moves. I mean, when his voice come, his sheep know that they need to move, right? And they obey his voice, right? And that was a parable. He explained the parable saying that, that the, the people are, are the sheep. His people are the sheep and he's the shepherd, right? And at that point, you know what I'm saying? We went on and uh, we talked a little bit about, uh, oh, he got into the dispute back and forth with the Hebrew people, right? And so we were talking to Yahushua. We were looking at him. And when we were looking at him, he was talking a little crazy, right? Remember, he said, he said, uh, what did he say? I and the father are one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he said, I and the father are one. Yeah, before, so the people got ready to stone him. He said, before Abraham was. Is that what he said last week? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So the people looked at him. They're looking like, nah, you make yourself, you know what I'm saying? You're making yourself God. You make yourself equal with God. Yeah, like, yeah, they're like nah, we don't do that. So they about ready to stone him. And he said, well, hold on. Don't you know that the scriptures say that ye are gods? And so then we broke down a little bit the psalm that, that talk about, you know what I'm saying, ye are gods um, and what that meant, you know what I'm saying, and we, how we would all die like men still, right? Then uh, then I think he went on to, I think he went on to uh, Martha and Mary's house, right? So he went to Martha and Mary's house and uh, Martha was, you know, busy serving everybody and all that. And he, he commended Mary for actually doing the part that was necessary, right? Trying to learn the book, trying to learn from his, his mouth. Um, I can't remember. What's in uh, Luke 10? Luke 10 is... Uh, my memory failed me. What did we talk about last week? Luke 10, we, we talked about... What came up in Luke 10? Oh, he sent the 70 out. All right, he sent the 70 out, but I think we skipped past that part. Um, yeah, I can't really remember Luke 10, but that's all right. We covered John 10. Let's pick it up now in uh, Luke 13. This is Luke 13, chapter 1. This is Luke 13, verse 1. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Yahshua answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, you shall all likewise perish. All right, so you got to imagine like what the tone was of this conversation. So they come to Yahushua and they talking about people from Galilee. 
right? He's in Judah. So you can, you can probably assume that it's a little bit of like them Galileans be sinners. You know what I'm saying? That them Galileans be doing all types of stuff they ain't supposed to do it. So you can assume that they probably using this to prove how bad Galilean, like Galilean so bad, God let X, Y, and Z happen to him. So what they said is that they had sacrifices and they got killed amongst the blood of their sacrifice, right? And it said that Herod mingled the blood of their blood with the blood of their sacrifice, right? And so Yahushua heard that and he's looking like, okay, I, I heard that too, but uh, do you think that make them, like, do you think that that make, you think that that's like a testament to them being more of a sinner than anybody else, right? Watch what he said. For those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all the men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Right? So he's saying, listen, there's some folks in Jerusalem that sinners too, in the same way. You're going to have a similar circumstance unless you repent is what he's saying. So he's saying, except, except you repent, you will likewise perish. Right? Keep going. Watch this. He spake also this parable. A certain a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came so there was a certain man and he had a fig tree and it was planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then he said unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Put it down. Why cumbereth it to the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it, and if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. And after he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, who was mm -hmm. bound together and could in no wise lift up herself. So she was weak, right? And she'd been this way for a long time. She couldn't even lift herself up. Watch this. When Yahshua saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Right? So now she's able to pick herself up, stand up straight. Right? And so then she started to glorify the Most High God. So he continuing with the, with the you know, with, with miracles just like he was before. Keep going. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Yahshua had healed the people. Healed on the Sabbath day, it said unto the people, These are six days in which men ought to work, in them there are, therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. And Yahuwah so then you see that Yahushua keeps provoking people by healing on the Sabbath. This has come up almost every time he heals, it's on the Sabbath that, that it gets called out because I'm sure he's healing every single day, right? But every time the Sabbath come around, you know what I'm saying, they kind of looking out like, Man, why are you working on the Sabbath? Because they consider in that work. Right, keep going. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, did not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. And all the people rejoice for all the glorious things that were done by him. Right. So he was trying to make the point that, listen, you are pretending like if your ox fell into a pit on the Sabbath that you wouldn't lift it up. He's like, now, if you're going to do that for your ox, why can't I heal somebody, a human being on the Sabbath? That don't make no sense. Right. So he's showing them their hypocrisy and the people couldn't really withstand it because they know it's true. They know they know that, look, if the ox fall in, of course we're going to lift it out. I'm not going to leave my ox just because it's the Sabbath, right? I'm going to help the ox out. So he's just showing them their own hypocrisy, right? Keep going. <laughs> and I thought this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan, oh, wait, my bad. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were him, and all the people rejoiced for the glorious things that were done by him. Then said he, unto what is the kingdom of God like, and whereunto shall I re resemble it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast into his garden, and it grew and waxed a, and waxed a great tree, and the fowls of the air lodged in the branches of it. And again he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like 
leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. Then so said, I want to call out something there. So a lot of times when we talk about leaven, um, oftentimes leaven is used to represent sin. Right. And so people will say, OK, leaven represents sin. But this is an example where leaven was used to represent the, the expansion of the kingdom. How the kingdom starts off as something small. But like leaven, it grows and it expands, right? So I just want to call that out. It's nothing. It's not a deep dive in here, but um, just know that it doesn't always represent sin. It's not like exclusive to sin. However, it does represent sin in some cases in some parables. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them. Strive to enter in the straight gate for me. He said, strive to enter in through the straight gate. Straight gate means, you know, like a, a tribulant path, right? You know what I'm saying like a difficult path. You know what I'm saying? Try to enter in through the difficult path. The one that takes skill to get into, right? Keep going. <laughs> for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Mm -hmm. When once the master of the house is risen up, and hath shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. He shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. Then shall Apart he begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. So the reason why he's telling them to depart is because they work iniquity. The question was, look, is it going to be few that enter into the kingdom? He's in there like, yeah, yeah, let me tell you something. Strive to enter in, but it's going to be tough. That's the message that we're saying. He's like, listen, do everything you can to get in, but it's going to be tough. Right. And this is this is the same thing that all of us experience. We get to look at it and be like, man, it's so hard. Or it's so difficult. But that's what he's saying. He's saying you can strive to enter in. It's going to be tough. Why is it tough? Well, he's telling you, he's saying you workers of iniquity, right? It's the sin, right? So the sin, as it continues, as you continue to do it, it it's tough. It's difficult to enter in through that straight gate, right? That thing is like a, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like to think of it as like a tight, tight rope where it's a narrow path. It's like a tight rope, but you got to imagine like this little tiny little slither and you got to try to fit yourself through it. And so he's saying it's going to be difficult, difficult to get into it, right? Keep going. One second. So is leaven on unleavened bread sin? Is leaven eating the so any any time? So I think I understand what you're asking, but I'm gonna answer it this way. And if it's not, just let me know if this is not what you really ask. So it is a uh, Leviticus commands us that we can't eat leavened bread during the week of unleavened bread. So we have to get all leaven out of our house and we can't eat unleavened. Uh, we can't eat leavened bread. So if somebody eats leavened bread during the week of unleavened bread, that is a sin because the commandment tells us not to do it. But the point I was making earlier is because of that commandment and because of Yahushua, he, he has a parable that said that talks about, you know, like the leaven of the Pharisees and all that. Oftentimes people and Paul does it as well. Oftentimes people relate leaven exclusively to sin as if like leaven is bad um, just in nature. So I always like to point out that leaven was also used to uh, describe the kingdom as well. So it's not exclusive to sin. But yes, in that scenario, it definitely is sin because the commandment tells us not to not to eat um, uh, not to eat leaven bread. Yeah. And uh, just like sin leavens, like just like leaven like a little bit of leaven plumps up the bread, swells it up. Same thing with sin, like a little bit of sin or a little, a little a itty bitty sin can like cause a ripple effect or cause like the, this situation to get a whole lot worse and affect a whole lot more people. Yeah, it's just a metaphor. Is That's kind of how you have to look at it. It's a metaphor, but people get, because of how it's used sometimes in the Bible, people start to look at leaven itself as if leaven is a sin and leaven is not a sin. But you are right. During the week of unleavened bread, it's a sin, right? So during that week, it is because the most high God told us not to have it. 
we have a study on uh anybody who's interested we have a study on on unleavened bread uh if you look it up on the website and and we we discuss that and kind of talk about unleavened bread why it's a sin exactly what it's talking about leaven versus any other leavening agent and all that good stuff um we try to go into it deep and break it down um so yeah look that study up if you want to know more about unleavened bread and how it works keep going what else we got There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. Mm -hmm. They shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdoms, kingdoms of God. And behold, there are they that are last which shall be first and they that are first which shall be last. They, they that are last shall be first and they that are first shall be last. On one of our uh, fellowship calls, we were just talking about this. Right. We are talking about how how there are going to be people that right now we look at. Right. When we sacrifice our Sabbath nights and we sacrifice some of the stuff on our Sabbath day and we dedicate everything to the most high God and we do no work. And, and we read our Bible every day because we're doing our Bible in a year and we ask questions and we take in notes and we do all these different things to kind of immerse ourselves in the most high God. And then we try to get our family and our friends or people that we see on the Internet, all these different people. We try to get them to be on the same page as us. We try to get them to to to, to read the book just like us and to get a life to the most high God, just like us. And sometimes them people look at us like we darn crazy. And we gon we look at them and like, mm, y'all don't know what y'all see when y'all should come back here. Y'all going to end up going to hell. That's how we look at them. Y'all going to end up going to hell when y'all should come back here. Not realizing that some of those very people, right? Y'all sure are gonna pop up, you know what I'm saying? And 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 some of those very people are gonna show up right with them. And they're gonna be ahead of us, right? They gonna have, they're gonna be ahead of us, they're gonna be in a position more honorable than we are, and we're gonna be looking like I was trying to tell him this, that, and the other, or I was trying to do this, this, that, and the other. And that's gonna be difficult for some of us, right? When it comes time where all the people start to get gathered and the plague start hitting the world. And the Israelites start going, you're going to see some of these Gentiles that called you the M word. Some of these people that were racist, stop you from getting a job, did all these things. Some of these very same people going to find out that we are the descendants of the true Israelites. And they Christian, but it's going to be like, I am so sorry. I would have never done that if I knew that y'all was the descendants. And we're going to be looking at your butt shit that did it to anybody. But they're going to get a whole life to the most high God. And they're going to turn from their wicked ways. And they going to, they Gentile butt going to be before you. Right? And that's going to hurt. It's going to touch us a little bit. We're going to be like, but you was racist. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to be like, it's, they going to be before us. Because this is what this is talking about. He's saying the first shall be last and the last shall be first. The order that we think we going in is not going to necessarily be the order. Right? Keep going. Watch this. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, Get thee out and depart from him, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, <laughs> Look, watch what he said. Look, y'all sure didn't like that. They like, listen, hey man, you better get loose. Herod gonna get your butt. You know what I'm saying? They told y'all sure that. Y'all sure didn't like that. Watch how he responded to this. He said to them, Go ye and tell that fox, behold. <laughs> he said, He said, oh, You tell that fox. You know what I'm saying? Y'all sure wasn't playing with him. Watch it. He said, tell that fox what? Behold, I cast out devils and I do cures today and tomorrow. And the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and, and tomorrow and the day following. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. He said, it, it, don't even, it don't even make sense that me being a prophet, I'll mess around and die anywhere but Jerusalem. Right? So he said, so I still got a little ways to go. I'm not worried about Herod is what he's trying to. That's the message that he's trying to give out. But notice what he said. He said, uh, he said, read it again. He said, uh, Go ye and tell that fox, behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today, tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Right? He said, Today, tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Right? He's talking about he's talking about the three days in his resurrection, but he's also talking about his return. Right? He's also talking about his return. 
where he come back here. What's going on, bro? I just saw how you doing. You getting big, girl? Huh? How old are you now? What? All right. Let's uh let's keep going. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen does gather her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and verily I say unto you, you shall not see me until the time come, and you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of Yahuwah. Right, so he's he's expressing through prophecy from the perspective of the Most High God, right? He's expressing how he would have loved to gather all the people of our land, right? And then bring everything together. But he's like, man, y'all keep resisting. Y'all kill all the prophets that we send. You know what I'm saying? The, the prophet gets sent and y'all kill him. Yeah, oh, my goodness. They don't, we don't, they don't realize that they talking to him. They don't realize that it's about to get rough, right? They don't know what's about to happen. They, they, haven't, they haven't been made aware. Of what's about to play out and how it's about to play out. So they don't realize it's about to get rough. They don't realize these Romans about to come and make a mess of the land. Right? But y'all, Shua sees that coming. He's just like, man, if y'all just understood, we could have fixed this thing a long time ago. And y'all just keep playing around. Right? Keep going. That was in the chapter. Go ahead and go to the next chapter. This is uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 1. And it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day that they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. Yahshua answered, answering, spake unto the lawyers and the Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace. And he took him and healed him and let him go. You see how he provoking him? So before he healed, he looked at him like, do you think it's love? Because they've been getting at him the whole time. Every time we read it, they getting at him talking about, man, you keep healing on the Sabbath, bro. You know what I'm saying? So he asked him before he healed. He was like, what y'all think? Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they're sitting there like, man, here you go. You know what I'm saying? Then he did what after that? And they held their peace and he took him and healed him and let him go. Mm -hmm. And answering them saying, which of you shall have a donkey or an ox fallen into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? They could not answer him again to these things. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out of the chief room, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest the more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. Right? So he's saying, listen, if you are bidden to a wedding, and you see all the seats open. Don't go sit in the seat where the top guy usually sit. Because it's going to put you in position that somebody might come to you and be like, you ain't that guy. Right? Watch what he said. And, the, and he that bade thee, and he that bade thee, and him come and say unto thee, give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. <laughs> right? You go, you go into the party, and you sit down. And you sit down next to the, you know what I'm saying? It's a birthday party. You sit next to the birthday boy. Oh, my man, how you doing? This, that, another. And for a minute, he entertained you. He sitting there, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, ain't seen you in a minute, man. Good seeing you. This, that, another. Because you sit, you sitting in the chair right next to him. And he looking like, yeah, but uh, that's my girl seat. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not, no, you good. No, you my man. This seat over there, you know what I'm saying? You can go take that one. But that's my girl seat. And everybody here, everybody see it. Now you got to get your butt up and mosey on the lawn and go sit. He, why would you put yourself? It'd be better if you sit way in the back and had a man come up and be like, yo, yo, yo. No, what you sitting in the back? Come on. I got a seat for you right here. He said, that looks better if you sit in the back. You know who you are. But you sit in the back and then you let them tell you, no, this is the seat we want you in. Rather than you being presumptuous and sitting in the man's. That's his, that's his woman's seat. He's going to sit right in this woman's seat and just sit there and start talking to him. He's going to entertain you for a little bit, but after a while, he's going to tell you, yeah, no, my, my girl, she went to go get a plate. But you know, you might, you, you know what I'm saying? You can go sit over there. Right? Keep going. Watch what the book says.
You reading or you on mute? My bad. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down at the lowest room, that when ye, when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, friend, go up higher. Then shall thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever shall be exalted shall be abased. Whosoever exalted himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Then said he right. also to him, then said he also to him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brother, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when you make a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind. Thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee. For thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Right? He's saying, listen, when you do something for somebody who can't pay it back, right? When you do something and you're not looking for nothing in return, he's saying your payback comes from the Most High God. Right? This is similar to what, what he taught us in, uh, I think it was Matthew 6. Right? Similar to what he taught us, I think, in Matthew 6. We have to make sure that when we do things, it's for the right reasons, right? That we're not doing it for vain glory or just so just so somebody can can um can pay us back or we can get good favor. So he's saying, don't just call your friends, right? Don't call your friends, right? Call, 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 call like call like the people that, that need you, right? That can't do nothing for you. Right? Call the poor. Ah. Call the poor, call the, uh, you know what I'm saying? Call the people that need some help. Because if you do that, then the most high guy, he can do something for you in the end, right? Our riches are stored in heaven when we do things like that way, right? When we not looking for glory, when we not looking for payback, when we not looking for people to tell us how great we are. A lot of times we could do, look, we figured out some sly ways to look great, some sly ways. To be like, to fake the humble and look great. People do it all the time on Facebook. They bring up certain things. Oh, well, you know, I was just helping this person. And oh, I'm just so needed from everyone. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, now you're trying to position yourself as a humble person that's very helpful. But really what you're looking for is for somebody to be like, goodness, you're such a great person. And when that becomes the reason that you're doing stuff, man, you got your reward already. Right? So y'all sure is trying to teach us how to avoid that type of thinking and how to avoid that type of way. Sometimes it's just about restricting yourself and teaching yourself not to desire glory like that. Keep going. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servant at supper time to say unto them that were bidden, come for all things are now ready. And they all went, one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I have to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and answered the Lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the main and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that may house that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. So all the people that was requested to come. They was too busy, right? They had other things that were more important, so they didn't come. And for that reason, they got disinvited and they were replaced by just randoms on the street. That is a parable for us, right? The Most High God sent invitations to us through prophets and men of God throughout all of our time, right? And we denied it. Right. The most High God sent, sent Isaiah. He sent Amos. He sent Hosea. He sent. Um, who am I missing? Uh, Micah. 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 Joel. Right. 
all in, he sent all four of these prophets before Israel was exiled into, into Assyria. Right? Nevertheless, did we repent? Did we stop? Right? Did Pika, you know what I'm saying? The Pika, you know what I'm saying? Did anybody stop and be like, let me consider? You know what I'm saying? Let me take a let me take a moment. Let me just take a beat. Right? Jeroboam tried to, he he got the prophecy from the most high God and was thankful for it, but did he ever stop Jeroboam too? You know what I'm saying? Did he ever stop and say, you know what? Since this happened, let me turn from all sins. It happens time and time again that the most high God sends us invitations, but we deny it. We say we're too busy for it. Right? Which ties back into our law. Grab uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20. This is Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1. Right. And so we say, uh, uh, Sister Pam asked, she said, if, if somebody compliments you for something good that you do, what should we do and what should we not do? It's not about what the other people do. It's about why you did it. You know what I'm saying? It's about it's about doing it. So if you fish, if you fish for the compliment, you should not fish for the compliment. You can't control how other people respond, nor should you judge yourself or anything based off of how somebody responds. Right. What you should be doing is you should you should angle your behavior in a way that you don't solicit that type of stuff where, hey, everybody watch me give money to the poor, put it on camera. It don't matter. It don't matter what your intentions are. If you do it that way, you're soliciting some type of praise from people. So now let's say let's say you don't. Right. Let's say let's say you tell nobody what you're doing. You go out, you wear a mask so nobody see you. And then you give money to the poor. You did your best to hide it. But somebody spots you. And they know you. And they like. And they put it on TV. And they say, look, this is Brother Phil. I've been watching him for three weeks. He's been coming out here and he's been feeding the poor. There's nothing wrong with that. Because they hide. That's exactly what Yahushua was saying. Yahushua was saying, let these people highlight it on their own. Right? That's what he means about. If I go and I try to take the best seat in the house because I think that much of myself, that's different from when I take the least seat in the house and the person who owns the house say, what you sitting over there for? No, come your butt over here. Right? You still getting glory. You still getting praise. But now it's not because you, you fished it or you tried to make it happen. You have to train yourself to not have behavior that seeks that stuff out. But yeah, people will certainly, people will certainly compliment you, right? And it's going to feel good, right? And it should feel good. The, the, the point of what y'all is saying is your butt shouldn't be looking for it. Because if you're looking for it and you get it, that's the gift. This is Deuteronomy chapter 20. Give me verse one. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid, mm -hmm. for Yahuwah thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. It shall be, when you are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, you approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not, and do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. For Yahuwah your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. The officer shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that has built a new house and has not dedicated it? Let him go and so look, what he, what, look what he said. He said, What man is there has, no, has not what? He said, Read again. And the officer shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that has built a new house and has not dedicated it? Let him go and return. What man house. has is there that has built a new house and hasn't had a chance to dedicate it? Right? This is before we go to war. Right? Before it's war time, he's saying he's weeding people out. He's saying, listen, now it's time to go to war. But first, who's out there 
You just built the house, but you ain't even had time to dedicate your house yet. Right? Watch what he say. Let him go and return to his house lest he die in the battle. And go back home. Dedicated. Right? You take your butt back home. We're about to go to battle. Right? If you think about your house, take your butt back home. You're not prepared for the battle. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And what man is there that has planted a vineyard and has not eaten of it? Let him go and return unto his house and let him, lest he die in a battle and another man eat of it. Right? You got a vineyard? You planted it? You ain't got nothing from your vineyard yet? Oh, no. You can't. We about to go to war. You can't be out here thinking about, oh, man, my grapes about to come in. You know what I'm saying? My olives about to come in. Oh, I can't wait to taste that new wine. Right? That, that can't be your mind. We are about to battle. No, no, no. Take your butt back home. Go home. Relax. Enjoy your wine. We're going to be out here fighting the battles. Right? Keep going. Watch this. What man is there that has betrothed the wife and has not taken her? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in battle and another man take her. Right? You mess around. You just got a wife, but you ain't even laid with your wife yet. They looking like, no, 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 no. Go ahead and go back home. You mess around. Think about your wife out there. You're going to get yourself killed, boy. Look, we don't even need you. Go ahead. You take your butt back home. Enjoy what you, you know what I'm saying? Do what's, do what's at the top of your mind. We got something to do here. Well, this is the exact same thing that Yahushua was saying. Let's go back and read it again. Right? This is the exact same thing that Yahushua was saying. This is, this is, uh, where we at? Luke chapter 14? Verse what? Verse 23. <laughs> Excuse me, this is Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Excuse me, verse 23. Watch what the book say. The people that's prepared, Sister Sharon said, with all these ways to get out of the battle, who's going to be left to fight? Only the people that's ready to fight. It's going to be some people that say, no, nah, I just built a new house, but guess what? I don't care. Right? Yeah, man, I got a new wife, but I don't care. I'm here for the war. Right? This is to weed out the people. Y'all remember Gideon? We don't have to get it. But y'all remember Gideon? Most High God was like, man, listen, you got too many people with you, Gideon. I tell you what. Send them to the water. Have them drink. You know what I'm saying? And if they drink like this out of their hand versus like this, you know what I'm saying, just straight from their mouth, he is like, man, listen, the ones, I think, what was it? The ones that, that drink out of their hand, I think. Yeah, he, I don't think he picked there. The one that drank straight from their mouth, he picked it in, and there was 300 of them. So you, it weeds it down to the size that the most high God wants. And that's what this does, right? It's like, oh, no, look, no, no, you good. No hard feelings. Stay your butt at home. If you ain't built for the battle, stay your butt at home, right? And yeah, a lot of people going to fall off. But the people that's going to be left are the ones that's really ready to fight. Them gonna be that's gonna be the ones that's really want it. They dedicated. They have faith in the battle, right? And that's what it takes. This is exactly what y'all was saying. Watch this. This is Luke chapter fourteen, verse twenty-three. Watch what the book say. We're gonna do verse eighteen. Uh, this is Luke chapter fourteen, verse eighteen. Watch this. They all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must need to go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Right? He got new property. You know what I'm saying? I just bought some new property. Ain't that the same thing that, that, the, that the law said? Our law said, listen, man, if you just built you a house and you ain't had a chance to dedicate it, you know what I'm saying? It don't make sense. Take your butt back home. Read it again. Watch what y'all sure is saying. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I must prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another mm -hmm. thing, I married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his lord these things. And the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly to the street. We skipped one, didn't we? Wasn't it three of them? Yeah, I did. I said three. But one was he had a piece of ground. The other one, he bought five yoke of oxen, and the other one had a wife. Oh, okay. Right? So you look at it, and you can see. Just like our law, they went back home. Right? Our people would have looked at that like, no, that's appropriate. That's what the law said. Yahushua is saying, yeah, but the battle is what saves you. Sure, you're right. Go home. But the battle is what saves you. Right? Keep going. 
Bring in here the poor and the maimed and the and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. The Lord said to the servant, Go unto the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. And there went a great multitude with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, his mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Right? This is what's necessary to be his disciple. Oh, we got go to Exodus chapter 32. This is Exodus chapter 32. I don't know what verse I want. I probably want verse uh probably what like 21. This is Exodus chapter 32. I'm feeling like verse 21, maybe. Right? This is where Moses was up for 40 days, 40 nights. Remember, the people didn't know. It ain't like Moses was like, hey, I'm about to go up here. I'll be going to wait for about 40 days, 40 nights. I'll be back. Y'all hold tight. They, oh, look, most of our guys spoke from a mountain. They scared, terrified, because they looking like we ain't never heard the voice of the most high God. It's thunder, it's lightning. The top of the mountain is smoking. This looks crazy. We're all about to die. They asked Moses, they said, Moses, you just go talk to him like you've been talking to him before. And you deliver the message to us because us hearing from him directly sounds like everybody's going to die. Moses is like, OK, I'm going to do that. Let me go up there and talk to him. The most High God spoke 10 commandments and they stopped him. Right. Moses went up to get the rest of the commandments. All of a sudden, he stay up there for 40 days, 40 nights. So they don't know. All they know is something very scary. It looked like it was going to kill everybody was happening. And Moses walked into the middle of it. And he's been gone for a week, for two weeks, for three weeks. Okay, Moses is probably dead, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, the same thing we thought was about to kill all of us, we thought it was going to kill Moses, or it killed Moses. So then, at that point, the people started to, you know what I'm saying, fall into some, some, some pernicious ways. You know what I'm saying? They asked, they asked Aaron, they said, hey, Aaron, would you build, you know what I'm saying, a golden calf for us? You know what I'm saying? Aaron actually built a golden calf. They didn't ask for it. But they, they asked him to make us, like, give us an image of God that brought us out of Egypt. And so Aaron came up with the golden calf. And then they had a feast to Yahuwah because they, they saw that that golden calf represented Yahuwah. Right? So then the Most High God told Moses that, hey, look, I'm about to kill all these folks. Right? And Moses was looking like, hold on. What is that about? Hold on, what happened? Did I lose connection? Okay. Moses looking like, what is that about? You know what I'm saying? Like, what you mean? So he ran down. And when he ran down, he saw the people playing, joking around, and, but, but participating in idolatry. Right? So this is, what is it, verse 21? Is that what I want? 26. 26. This is, uh, this is Exodus chapter 32, verse 26. Watch the book say. Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on Yahuwah's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Right? So now the sons of Levi gathered themselves to Moses. Right? Moses asked, who's on Yahuwah's side? Y'all doing all this crazy stuff. Who's standing for the law? Who's standing for the, the Ten Commandments so far that we got? Who's standing for that that we just heard that told us make no image? Who's standing on it? Right? And then the Levites are the only ones that stood up and they stood by Moses. And watch what happened. And he said unto them, Thus says Yahuwah God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side and go in and out from the gate to the gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor. The children of Everybody Levi got to kill your brother, your companion, and your neighbor. Right? Because you have to make a decision. When it comes down to it, what's more important, the most high God or my family? And this is exactly what Yahushua is telling us right now. Yahushua is saying, if you don't hate your mom, your dad, your father, right? Your brother, your sister, your wife, your own children, then you're not worthy of me. 
right? Because what he's saying is you have to be willing to, like, if it comes down to it, you got to be willing to put uh, him before any of them. We all can hope for the, for the, for the happy path. Right? We all can hope that, oh, all of our family joins the path with us and we're all on the same page and it's all happy and it's all happy go lucky and we're all a strong unit. We can all hope for that. And God, I hope that that's how it works out for y'all. Right? But if it doesn't, you got to be willing to say, oh, well. Right? This is where I'm going. This is the standard. This is what I got to do. You can't let I'm 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 talking to a, a a a sister online and she's talking about her husband, right? And she complains that he tries and she tries to get her husband, but she can't teach him. Right? I can't teach him the word, but I just can't get him to listen to a brother like you or some of the other brothers that I listen to, this, that, and the other. He just is not interested in it. What should I do? I'm looking like you should darn do nothing. Just let him know what your standard is. No, you're not going out to them places with him. No, you're not drinking. It doesn't matter if that's how y'all met each other. It doesn't matter that that's what, how y'all fell in love. These are the things. Yes, you acting different. Yes, you changed. But you stand in that. And you let him know, look, I mean, hey, this is the standard for me. He has to react to you. Right? This is the word. It does, everything else has to mean nothing to us. It has to mean nothing to us because otherwise Satan is going to use this stuff against us. Right? If you love your husband more than you love, you love the most high God, don't you know that Satan is going to use your, your, your husband against you? There's a lot of us that love our, I mean, adore our kids, will do anything for our kids. Believe me, he's going to use our kids against us. Right? He's going to have you making all types of sacrifices. Your kid going to be moping around, wishing they had more. Now you're going to be lying on your taxes to get them a big birthday. All types. Look, it's going to happen, right, that you're going to feel that. You have to start consciously making the decision. Nobody come before the Most High God. Nobody come. I will kill my own brother if it came down to it. Because that's what the Levites did. Right? We have to prepare ourselves for this stuff mentally constantly, right? The book tells us to be circumspect. In other words, you got to be watching in all directions because the attacks are always there. You're always under attack, always. So you got to be watching to see where the next one going to come from constantly, constantly, constantly. And it's going to be your family. And once you think like, okay, now nah, my family good. We on the same page. Guess what? It's going to be some your friends. And once you think it's like, no, nah, my friend, then it's going to be back to your family. Then it's going to be a job. Then it's going to be this. Like, it's going to always be an attack. Just settle that in your mind. Right? And then from there, it's about how do I dodge them things? Flip them things like the Matrix. Right? How do I withstand it? And the way that you do that is you consciously prepare yourself. Nothing is more important than the Most High God. Right? Take it as a challenge. You know what I'm saying? Back in the street, sometimes you look at it, you know what I'm saying? You look at it, you kind of walking down the street or you hanging out. And sometimes it's a challenge if somebody look at you. You don't know what that person thinking, but you just know that if you look at me and my eyes too long, you might be trying to say, I'm soft. Like you might trying to say, you might be trying to say, like you might be trying to like just punk me. You trying to make me turn away first. Little stupid stuff we used to do, right? That's how you got to look at Satan. That's how you got to look at these attacks. Oh, you trying to say I'm chump. You trying to, okay, I see what you trying to do. You trying to say, because I love my daughter, you trying to say I'm a, I'm a hypocrite over this. That's not going to happen. You got to treat Satan like he trying to treat you like a punk. And when that happens, you got to be like, okay, nope, most I got, I'm not falling for it. I'm not falling for it. I'm going to stay strong. you got to constantly prepare yourself in your mind. Nothing comes before the most high God. And if you do that and you practice that with little things, sometimes we be looking for the big things. We be looking for the big situation. We be looking for like, 
we were looking for like some guy. Y'all saw uh, what's that movie called? Uh, The Devil's Advocate. I think he wasn't he a lawyer or something like that. Yeah. We that's the type of stuff we looking for. We looking for like this big contract. You know what I'm saying? With this lawyer to come in. I have a billion dollars for you if you sign here, but you have to sign over your soul to the Illuminati. That's what we're looking for. That's e. I know. I know you think like, oh, I would never sell my soul. I know to you that's that's so difficult. I mean, that's like that's the one I would do it. I would stand up. That's the one you preparing for. Oh man, the way he coming after you is way easy. It's simple than that. He going he gon' all he doing is dang cuss right now. It's simple. Look. The way he get, you sell your soul for nothing. You think it, you trading a billion dollars. Your soul ain't even worth a billion dollars. Your soul is worth a darn cuss word. Something simple. Right? He was in there. Darn, man. It. Oh, got him. That's all it take. Right? Because we're always focused on the big stuff. It's the little things that we got to perfect. The little things, the tiny things. Just put God first. With reading in the morning, put God just set up, set set something, set something that you're gonna do. Small, don't even make it big, but just say this is this is my time for God. I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna pray every morning before I go to work. This that another, just whatever it is, and put God for it. No matter what stuff is going, I'm telling. Just train yourself. Stuff is gonna come up. You always got a peaceful morning. Don't nobody ever. You wake up before your whole house. Guess what? All of a sudden. You have somebody call you in an emergency. Hey, I'm stranded. I need your help. This, that, another. And you'll be looking like, ooh, I got to pray. I bet you just stop. Be like, yeah, I'll be there in a little bit. Hang up that phone. Be like, anyway. You know what I'm saying? Most high God, help me get there. Hopefully, there's no traffic. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to finish my prayer like I normally do every morning. And then after that, then get to your rush of your day. And just, I don't care how evil it feel, how mean it feel. Nothing comes before the most high God. And watch how stuff work out. You do it with little things, one at a time. And then it grows. Don't try to start with big stuff. Don't wait for the darn billion dollar darn contract to sell your soul. So you can say, see, I said, no, I didn't sign that contract. Oh, please. Oh, but that was, you sold your soul a long time before that contract came. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses and their fellow of the people that day about 3,000 men. Jump over, uh, jump back to uh, Luke 14. This is Luke 14, probably about what, verse 25? 28. It's Luke 14, huh? 26. This is Luke 14, verse 26. What does the book say? If any man come to me and hate not his father, mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And what and whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? That's right? What he's telling you right now, he's telling you this is not for everybody. And I know some of y'all probably heard me say some stuff like that. It's not I listen, anybody who's seen me in action know I am not the person that's telling everybody, hey, you you can do it. Save your soul. Repent. Y'all never see me walking up to random people talking like that. Because I know this thing ain't for everybody. In fact, oftentimes y'all hear me say the opposite. Like, listen, just be honest with yourself. If you want to go be a sinner, man, go sin it up. Don't be an average. Listen, if you made the decision like, man, look, I know the book is true and I heard all the information. Or maybe I heard all the information and I don't believe it's true. Whatever you think, Right. Don't go be a mediocre sinner. That's crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're going to do it, if you got exposed to the truth and you're looking like, nah, that, I ain't going with that. Man, you better. Like, I don't understand the people who, who are exposed to the truth, but then they got morals. And their morals don't come from the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, why do you care? You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I don't do that. I just, I'm just not that type of person. I'm not going to lie. Like, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you just, like, arbitrarily just going to pick something out of the sky that you just are going to hold yourself not to do? Like, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't believe the book and you don't believe it's any God, why in the world is you limiting yourself? Well, you better go out there and be the best darn liar you can darn be. Best darn cheat you can darn be. That's crazy to me. 
if I made a decision, you know what? I'm just going to live. You know what I'm saying? I understand God, but I'm just about to live in sin. Hopefully, you, you ain't about to see me out there playing. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be the best. They're going to put me on the darn billboard for sinners. You know what I'm saying? He the best darn sinner. I got to live it up. You're going to burn in hell forever, and I'm not going to get the best out of it? Oh, please. I'm going to work my sin out. You know what I'm saying? That ain't crazy to me. Sometimes people have to understand that, like, this is not for everybody. Nor should it be advertised that this is, because that's, it's cruel if you try to, what the Christians are doing is cruel. Because they make, they make it feel like everybody can get it. Like, God loves everybody. And the book is telling you only a few. Enter in through the straight. Man, it's going to be real tough. So it sets you up to be the person that's saying, hey, hey, Yahushua, didn't we? But we did X, Y, and Z in your name. And we ate and drank at the same table as you. What do you mean? It set them up to thinking it's going to be nice. Everybody going to get it. But in reality, nah, you ain't built for this. And sometimes people aren't built for it. Right? Sometimes people aren't built for it. Let people make that decision. Right? You can't, you have to consider and think about what am I getting myself into? I like people to know what they're getting themselves into. If you, look, if you can't handle that the most high God don't want you to be gay, you know what I'm saying? If you can't handle that the most high God, you know what I'm saying, don't want a woman leading a man. If you can't handle that the most high God say a teacher can't have multiple wives, right? If these are not things that you can handle, by all means, exit stage left. You know what I'm saying? Do what you got to do because I wouldn't want to tie you down into something knowing that you ain't got what it takes to make it. Oftentimes, I tell people, I was like, listen, the life that I have set up is very intentional. As much as I can control, I do, right? I tell my kids, listen, this is how much you can get out of me. That, that, that maybe I'm not the greatest father ever. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? Listen. Daddy only got so much. I'm not about to look. I'm not about to sit here and watch cartoons with you for three hours. You know what I'm saying? I'm not about to sit there and play patty cake with you for seven hours. That's just not that. Dad is an introvert. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dad at some point needs to separate, recharge. So guess what? I manage that with my children because I know, although I, I know exactly what to be the perfect father and husband, I know exactly what to do. I'm aware of it. I got it. I got it down to a T up here. Like, oh yeah, buy flowers and this. And this. Listen, but at some point you got to consider and be like, okay, if I start that right now, will I be able to maintain that for the next 45 years, for the next 70 years, for the next whatever, how many years we going to be married? I don't know. Right? So then is it better Right. For me to start and then be inconsistent, that somebody else to believe this is what it is. When I know I've been me my whole life. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. And I think that's what Yahushua is saying. Yahushua is saying, don't start something. If you looking down the road and you you don't think you got what it takes, you got to learn. What does it take? What does it take to be consistent in this life? Right. Consistent in this way. It means that you got to have chase behavior. Right. You got to you got to turn from all sin. Right. You got to put all the fruits of the spirit in the, fr the forefront. Can you do that? If you can, excuse me, if you can, then take the walk. If you can't exit stage left, ain't nobody trying to force you to be here. And if you exit stage left, you still might have a chance to come back. You know what I'm saying? But don't lie to yourself. Don't get to being over here. You know what I'm saying? Overhyping yourself. Do all this. No, do what you can handle. Right. Do what you can handle. Keep going. Less happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. And all that behold, it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. For what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consults whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that come out against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends an embassage and desires conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. 
Salt is good, but if it, if the salt loses its savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor yet the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that he hath ears to hear, let him hear. Right? So that's how it works, right? That's how the most high God put it, you know what I'm saying, put it before us. So that we can make decisions, right? Based off of information. That's what that's all he's asking us to do is hear his voice and then make a decision. What are you gonna do? Don't be don't be in the middle though. Right? Don't try to play the middle. Don't try to say, I mean, but I do love God. I just that's the middle. You know what I'm saying? Just decide what do you want to do. No, nah, I'm gonna be a sinner. I'm gonna be a sinner. I heard the word, I understand what you're trying to say, but I'm not doing that, right? This is the life I'm gonna live. Go do it. People don't realize that you got a better chance at salvation, right? If you acknowledge, this is what the word is trying to say. I either don't believe it or I do believe it and I just don't want to do it, right? One or two, right? Acknowledge that. Be honest with yourself. You ain't got to be honest with everybody, but just be honest with yourself about it. This is what I want to do. And then step away. You got a better chance at the most high God reaching you from there than you do when you play in the middle. When you say, oh, no. I mean, I really am a good person and deep down, God knows my heart. I just, I'm just going through a lot. So that's why I keep you making all these excuses. Like, no, I really, really do love God and have faith, but all my actions say the opposite and you won't acknowledge it. And because you won't acknowledge it, you stuck in this stupor state where you just can't understand what's going on. And that can't nobody help you from there. But if you choose a side, you say, you know what, man, listen, I get it. I just, this is what I want to do right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, maybe one day I'll turn, but right now, this is what, how I want to live. And this is what I want to do. Go send it darn up. Don't play it darn round. Right? But if you want to get into the kingdom, then you choose the most high God. It's going to be very few to do that. Very few. Right? Very few to do it. You got to set these people up and let people know, you know what I'm saying? Look, ain't for everybody. It's a very exclusive club. We should be proud of that. It's a very exclusive club. Right? Thing ain't built for everybody. Not everybody can walk this walk. Shouldn't even be setting people up like that. This is say you got to be, the, you know what I'm saying? She said the Diddy of sinners. You know what I'm saying? The I ain't being hard on Diddy, boy. I ain't being hard on Diddy. And my man Diddy went to jail, and the next day it's a full blown documentary on the homie. Like, how does that happen? Listen, man, that's how they do us, man. It's a, it's, a, it's a different game. So it's like, it's a tricky thing, right? Because it's like, you sound like you defending them if you call out like, mm, justice is not fairly, you know what I'm saying, distributed. Right? It seems, it just seems like when our people get caught doing something they ain't supposed to do, man, that's how justice, like when we get it, it seems like that's how justice is supposed to look. You know what I'm saying? But I still ain't seen the Epstein list. You know what I'm saying? Like Diddy is baby Epstein. If what they saying about Diddy is true, he's baby Epstein. But y'all got the real guy and got all the information. But he's tied in with big banks. Epstein was tied in with Chase. They had to look. A lady sued Chase Bank. And the CEO or president of Chase or whatever, right? Because of their involvement with, with Epstein and won the lawsuit, won like millions of dollars in the lawsuit, right? Because she was one of the victims and Chase helped that happen. The whole world know this. When did that show up on the news? They got, they got Epstein's um, madam, right? Jaleel, what her name? G Giselle, Jaleel, Jaleel, Max, Maxine, Max, Max, Maxine, what is it? Maxwell? Something like that. Giselle Maxwell or something like that. I can't remember her name. Right? But she was the one that kind of organized it. But you know, like if you a real pimp, then you always got, you know what I'm saying, like in the hood, they call them the bottom. Right? You got the one that, that was with you from the bottom, right? She understand how you operate. She understand all these things. She going to keep all the other women in line for you. She's going to do it. Your hands ain't even got to get dirty on certain stuff because she's going to take care of it for you, right? And so that same concept applies to, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, uh, that's the hood version. But that same concept, they call them madams. So what happens is the madam, you know, tightens up the girl. No, don't do that. Don't do it this way. But it's a woman talking to another woman. 
So that's what she was to these little children, these little girls. Right. And she would prepare them and do all these things. They know this stuff. They got her in jail. They got all the information. Right. Where is this list? When they got Bill Clinton on a plane with her, with, with, with this man, flying to this secret island where all this, where they know all this stuff was going down. They got old presidents on footage with this man. Where is that list? Where are those videos? But as soon as, look, Diddy ain't been down. They locked Diddy up the next day. They talking about, oh, we got some footage. Him and this person. Him and this person. They got Justin Bieber out here reliving all his, you know, that thing is out of line. Justin Bieber out here trying to be a good, it ain't funny, but Justin Bieber out here trying to be a good Christian. He's singing Christian song. He's doing all this stuff. Hey, what's going on? Who is this? Oh, this is the one you're telling me about? I was about to say, I don't know who that is. You got some big hair. I like that. All right. Uh, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? They got Justin Bieber out here. He got to relive all this stuff he's been trying to get away with. You know what I'm saying? He up there saying, look, I ain't never heard some of these songs. I was like, he's been singing this the whole time. I saw some clips of him singing. I was like, no, that's a darn good song, but that thing is sad. You know what I'm saying? Like, goodness gracious, right? Because it's trauma that he's dealing with. He's trying to get away with it, and they put him on front page. Why? Why do you think Justin Bieber is the front page victim for Diddy? Little white boy, right? Little white boy, let's do it. Where are Epstein's victims? Why are all them under lock, seal, and key? All the victims, ain't none of them public? They got victims. Not one of them? Is, like, I, I can't get one of them on CNN? That's cold game. Why I can't get an Epstein victim singing a song? You know what I'm saying? Put her butt on the stage to sing, sing a Christian song like Justin Bieber is. They should collaborate. You won't see none of that stuff. Right? It's different. Justice is distributed different. And they look at us like we crazy for calling it out. They're gonna call, you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna say, You're defending, you're defending Diddy. That's what they do about Trump, too. If you're a black person, you like Trump, you're a Trump supporter. He's racist. You like, man, I'm just saying that, you know what I'm saying? I feel him on the hypocrites. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's a black job. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel him. You know what I'm saying? But they be like, oh, you're a racist too. Like, I'm black. Are you okay? All right, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. You know what I'm saying? You can't argue with these people. But that's how that's how people want it. That's how people that's oppression. That's what that is. That's oppression. When people when people force you to not have any nuance, right? Y'all know what nuance is, right? Where it's like it's like nuances is, is like so like the opposite of nuance is it's very black and white, right? You make this decision or you make that decision, right? When it's nuance, it's like mm, well, I might make this decision in these scenarios, but. In this scenario, I'll make this decision. Unless this happens, then I might do this. It gets complicated when you have nuance, and that's real life. Real life is nuance, right? It's a bunch of if and statements, right? It's a bunch of logic that 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 little things can change everything, right? When people force you into one decision, and you're looking like, well, if you don't do this, then you're this. That's oppression, and you'll see that happens a lot to our people on both sides, right? On both sides. Right? That's why Biden can, can sit down with us and very comfortably say, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Right? That's why Kamala can sit down and she can laugh and be like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to just pass a bill that's only for black people. <laughs> Laughing about it like it's a joke. I'm like, oh, okay, well, it's a lot of things that happen only to black people in this country. But hey, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Right? That's why the Republicans don't even want to entertain you're not going to see a Republican on TV even talk about reparations. Like, boy, I ain't about to see her talk to you about no darn reparations. They got a black dude that support Trump, right? He jump out and he talk about reparations. Like, yeah, no, reparations doesn't make sense because, you know, I mean, who would you even pay it out to? Turns out, guess where this man is from? The Caribbean. You're not even from here. How are you to pull to the spokesperson of it? But that's how they play. Right? The first black president of the United States wasn't black American. The 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 first woman vice black vice president might not even be black anything, but definitely ain't black American. Right? The man that 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 was pretty close, maybe was gonna be picked for a VP pick for Trump, 
He a black, not black American. None of these people, the, half of these people that y'all see on TV and on these movie shows, not black American. My man's look in Snowfall. Y'all watch Snowfall? Oh my god, that's my show. I mean, he killed the show. Nothing against my man's. I love the show. Not black American. There's a reason for these things. This stuff is not accidental. They, they get all these Haitians in. Look, they thought they were doing something bringing them Haitians in. They thought they were doing a big one. They was like, like, okay, look, bring the Haitians in. That way, if Trump say something about these immigrants, it's racist. We got them. You think Trump, <laughs> Trump racist but don't care? He look like the Haitians is eating dogs. You know what I'm saying? Say, he don't care nothing about that stuff because he look, and now they stuck. They're like, no, oh. well, they not eating dogs. But then you got black Americans showing up on TV. No, they eating dogs, bro. You got a man, look, it's a dude. He came in on one of the conferences at the city, city council. And he talking, look, look, bro. <laughs> he talking like one of us. Look, bro, I'm sick of this stuff. Look, they back there, they grilling dogs. They did that another. Now what you going to do? It backfired. The plan backfired. Because now black people on Trump's side. They look like, no, y'all keep moving them in to replace us. And y'all think we don't notice this. Right? Y'all think we can't tell. No, all of that stuff is oppression. And it's not just a Democrat thing. It just Democrat just happen to be the holders of the moment. Right? But all these people fight, fight for our oppression. I told somebody today, I said oppression is a bipartisan issue. You know what I'm saying? They agree. That, let me tell you, there's a couple things that they agree on. Oppression and sending money to all these countries. To get their little kickbacks. Right? We got to look at this stuff. We can't just be falling for all this stuff that they say. Look, Daddy, you know what I'm saying? We know. we. You ain't got. I don't need no CNN to tell me that Diddy was a scumbag. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. You're not telling me nothing that I didn't already believe. I ain't had evidence, maybe. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You put, you put it on TV. Okay, listen. They released a video. Of Diddy beating up Cassie. Horrible, right? They released a video of him beating up Cassie. What's the name? Just slapped his wife in front of everybody. What's his name? Dana, Dana White. White. Yeah. He just slapped it in the middle of a club. Look, Diddy, listen, I'm not trying to say anything is excusable. What I'm saying is what happened to Diddy could happen to a lot of people, right? He slapped his wife in the mid. Everybody's around. Diddy did it close behind closed door. He thought he was getting. A Diddy thought he was getting away with something, right? That's one thing. I'm scared of the person. I don't care who's around. Whack it. Sit your butt down. And then she get back up. Whack it again. That's who I'm afraid of. Because what's happening when no one is around? If that's what you're doing when everybody is around, maybe somebody should investigate that. Maybe, maybe Dana White got some freak offs. This is what happens. They got the news calling it freak offs. You know, white people are supposed to call it orgy. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't you, don't take our stuff. But that stuff is abuse, right? They use our word and that, that stuff is abuse. You can't do that stuff. We can't fall for this stuff. We can't just go along with the, they're going to show us the stuff. How'd that tape get released on Diddy? Somebody did that. You know how old a lot of this stuff is? Somebody did that. When they want to go after somebody, you know how far back they reach for the stuff that they got? All this stuff that's on Diddy, if you go read the thing, you know how old this stuff is? They didn't just find out about this stuff. They had this stuff. Somebody was sitting on it, and they say, okay, now it's time. You're playing too much. Now it's time. So now, it's right that that happened. It should have happened a long time ago. They, they, had, they had a news report that said Diddy Face was in the police department. You know what I'm saying? Like his, his picture was hung up in the, you know what I'm saying, in the police department because they honored the man. They looking like, yeah, this, that, another. And so now the police got to explain, like, nah, man, we took him to jail, this, that, another. But why you had his face up all these years? Y'all didn't know none of it. All this stuff was happening underneath your nose? And so the man, the spokesperson, he had to say, he's like, well, listen, I think what we really need to focus on is today justice is being served. Yeah, I bet you do want to focus on today. Because there's a there's an explanation, there is an explanation of why this is just now happening. And when you get to the bottom of that question, 
I think you get a lot more people than just Diddy. When you get to the bottom of why haven't we heard nothing from an Epstein video? I mean, I just won't just I mean, just put her on on NBC tonight. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to hear her articulate who she was messing with, who else was involved. You know what I'm saying? Some of the atrocities that she had to go through. Now, all them women is locked away. Locked away. We don't know. We don't hear nothing from them. All of them. NDAs, all type of stuff. Right? Some people get protected. And they creeps too. Creepier. Nasty boys. Doing nasty stuff to little girls and little boys. Right? But they get protected. I think what happened to Diddy should happen to a lot of people. I'm not saying nothing should be happening to Diddy. I'm not saying nothing shouldn't happen to R. Kelly. I'm not saying nothing should have. Bill Clinton now. I mean, not Bill Clinton. What's his name? Bill Cosby. I'm a little iffy on that one. I don't know. When I, when I try to read into that, I'm like, I don't think this is, I don't think this is real. Right? He's the only one that I'm looking like, I don't know if he really did anything that's worth, you know what I'm saying, what y'all tried to do to him. But the rest of these boys, lock these boys away. All I'm asking is, do the same thing to the other folks. All right? There's a lot of nasty people out here. A lot of nasty people. Make sure you get them all. I don't even know how we got to talking about that. Any questions? <laughs> Oprah's next. But yeah, Oprah might be next. These some nasty people. When they stole her from the home, he probably having a blast in jail. No, that's not that's not nice, Sharon. He ain't having no blast in there. He might be having a blast. That thing might be right up the darn alley. <laughs> that might, I mean, it might be. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think they, I don't think they're going to let him around nobody. He said, he said he ready to tell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That boy released a statement. He said, oh, I can't wait to tell my story. You know, that's a threat. That's what he's doing. He's sending a threat to all the people like, y'all, y'all want to play with me? I know a lot now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They might try to kill him like they did, you know what I'm saying? Like they supposedly did Epstein. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you know what I'm saying? They, you know, he is like, I can't wait to tell my story. I ran down, I said, Oh, that boy said, that boy said, I'm about to tell it all. I'm about to tell it all. We'll see. We'll see. Any questions? No questions? He going out like Nino Brown for sure. Yo, I'ma tune in now. I'm talking all this mess. I'ma tune in. Like when it's on TV, I'ma tune in. When CNN put them up there, I'm definitely going to tune in and I'm going to watch the DVD. Uh, what, what 50 Cent coming out with? 50 Cent, because he coming out 50 Cent, I don't lie. 50 Cent said he coming out with a, with a documentary on him. I'm going to watch it. Begrudgingly, but I'm going to watch it. You know what I'm, I'm going to see, see what's on it now. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm I got to keep up. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to keep up with the code. That's all. You know what I'm, I'm going to see what's on it. But I want the Epstein doc. And the real one, not these little baby docs that they got right now. I want the real one. I want the real one with the answers in it. But who's in there? You know what I'm saying? With some confirmation. They got his videos too. I'm trying to figure out like, you know what I'm saying? Just tell me who in the video. That's what's important to me. And who else is connected? And who was behind them? Who protected them for all these years? Was it CIA? He Jewish. Was it Mossad? Y'all know what Mossad is, right? Look, Mossad, Mossad is the Israeli, you know what I'm saying, is the Israeli CIA, you know what I'm saying, it's the, it, the Israeli intelligence service, right? And these boys so bad, right? They 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 they, they, at, they trying to be in three wars at once, right? So they, they at the Palestinians in Hamas, right? Then up north of them, they at Lebanon just recently, right? Shooting rockets back and forth. And then they trying to start something with Iran, Right? But Iran is technically back in Lebanon. So Lebanon doing everything they can do because Iran got their back. Iran kind of like us, right? You know, like we don't fight direct wars. What we do is we say, nah, Ukraine. You know what I mean? Continue some missiles. Shoot them off. You know what I'm saying? Shoot them off at Russia. Because really we beefing with Russia, but we let the little homie do it. Right? So Israel's the same way. You know how bad these boys are? The Lebanese thought they was about to do something. They thought, look, they put the plan together. They sitting there like, okay, listen, we're going to do this. We're going to send these missiles off. We're going to do it. They thinking they about to do one big, right? Right before that thing go off, these boys got, look, 
You got to be so slick when you're in some of these services and you at war. You can't just have a cell phone because they know everybody tracks cell phones. So, you know, these Lebanese people, they didn't have cell phones. You know what they had? Pagers. Old school, right? They had pagers and walkie-talkies. They avoided cell phones because they knew they could be tracked. Do you know that Mossad and Israel had them set up to somehow they was all buying their pagers from them? They planted bombs in all they played pagers, blew all they stuff up, killed a whole bunch of people in one day. And one day they just lit a bomb and all these electronic devices. I think some of them was TVs too. They put all these bombs and all this stuff that was untraceable. Can't nobody know. So now everybody got to walk around and say, is my phone a bomb? Because these people now have exposed that they're capable of doing this. Right. They're capable of doing whatever they did, whatever substance they put in there. It's not detectable. Right. You can't, you would never know. You can't even, you can't even, most of your phones, what kind of phone you got? You should be ashamed of yourself, but you can't, you can't pop the, pop the battery off of that thing. You can't open that thing up. If somebody got to it before you got to it and you bought the phone, these people have now exposed that at any moment they could press a button, boom, blow up your whole little city. Right? Them some bad boys. Well connected, very powerful people. So you got to ask the question who was protecting Epstein? Who was it? Phones blew up. That's for sure. Hope my phone don't blow up. Phones definitely blew up. These people are different. Right? It's a different world. It's a it's a it's a it's a lot of uh it's a lot of lies that's going around. A lot of things that the general public ain't going to really, it's open, it's information that's out there, but now we have information overload, right? It used to be a time where like, like when I was young, information wasn't there, right? You couldn't get to this information. You just, it's no way to know a lot of stuff, right? You really, really had to be connected to somebody to be privy to a lot of stuff. Now, the information's out everywhere, right? The problem is now it's an information overload, right? If I can't stop my information from being out, guess what I got to do now? I got to obfuscate it by putting a whole bunch of other stupid information out there so we never get to the real ones, right? And so that's what we deal with now. It's just, it's so much information and so much misinformation and disinformation. And the people who given us this information is calling the real information disinformation. And now we just all in this place where it's like, nobody know who to trust. Nobody know who telling the truth. And here we are. No, but seriously, do we have questions? No? All right, let's pray out.